In the last video, we looked at a real-world audio signal, and we looked at what happened to that signal when you downsampled it, and then tried to reconstruct the original signal with a downsampled signal. As you downsampled, you used an anti-aliasing filter to prevent aliasing, which effectively removed real signal content, and then when you went back to reconstruct the signal, you could not perfectly reconstruct the signal. Another aspect of working with signals is quantization. So sampling dealt with sampling in time and discretizing in time. Quantization deals with how you discretize along the amplitude axis. So we'll look at a little example to see what happens as we change the quantization levels that we use on a real signal. So I've chosen a different signal here. It's a much shorter signal, just a few seconds long, so we can see the entire signal. It starts off, you know, nobody's speaking, somebody speaks for a second, and then the end of the clip has no audio as well. So all the signal content is right here between approximately, you know, one and a half to three and a half seconds. And again, since I'm working on a computer here, by definition, this has already been sampled and quantized, sampled in time and quantized. Computers can't store signals that are continuous. They can't store amplitudes or values with infinite precision. So by necessity, the fact that this was on a hard drive and I loaded it, it's already been sampled in time and quantized. The amount of quantization that it was stored with initially was eight bits. Since there are eight bits, that means two to the eight is 256. So that means between minus one and one, there are 256 discrete levels that the signal was originally quantized to. And if you look in here, you might be able to make where some of those levels exist, but the levels are quite small. You know, from one to minus one, 256 levels, that means that the quantization levels, the little gaps are quite small. If you were to listen to this audio signal, sounds great, can't notice any distortion, sounds you know, crystal clear. What we're gonna do now is we are going to change the quantization level. So I'm gonna keep my sampling in time exactly fixed. So the same number of samples in time, but each one of the amplitudes we're going to re-quantize. We're gonna stay between plus and minus one, but we're gonna let the number of levels between plus and minus one change. So first, let's go to six bit quantization. Since I have six bit quantization, two to the six is 64. So there are 64 levels. And now you can definitely start seeing where some of those quantization levels are. You can kind of see this button, this bar right here, then it ticks up. So you can already start seeing what the gap is between the quantization levels. Obviously, having gone from eight bits to six bits, we've changed the signal completely, right? We've completely changed how we've rounded these values off. If you were to listen to this signal, this one probably wouldn't sound too bad. It wouldn't sound a little bit different, maybe a little, a little staticky compared to the first one. But even with 6-bit quantization, this is still not too bad in terms of maintaining the quality of the audio. If we go more extreme, let's say go to 4 bits. Now, 4-bit quantization, 2 to the 4 is 16. So now I have 16 levels spread between 1 and minus 1. And now it's very clear where these levels are. There's a level here, and then there's a level here, and there's a level here. You can see these gaps very clearly now in these quantization levels. If we played this signal through our speakers, this would start sounding pretty bad. A lot of static and hissle and crackle. It would not, not sound nearly as nice as the original audio signal. Now, however, the original s signal that we started with had eight bits per sample. This has four bits per sample. So the trade-off is, even though if you were to listen to this, it has less audio quality, it also takes half the storage space. I only need to write down four bits of information for each one of these time domain samples, whereas for the first signal, I had to write down eight bits of information for each one of the samples. So it's not completely all, all bad, you know, worse audio for less storage, maybe that's a trade you're willing to take. And then finally, just for the heck of it, let's do three bits. And now it's abundantly obvious where the levels are. Two to the three is eight. You can see there's a level here, there's a level here, there's a level here. And if you were listening to this, this audio signal would sound quite bad. So that wraps up kind of our real world example of quantization. We started off with a wave file that had plenty of quantization levels, sounded great. And then what we did was we systematically changed the number of bits used, which affects how many quantization levels there are which dramatically changed the overall look and sound to this audio signal. 
In the next couple videos, we'll do very similar things. We'll look at sampling and quantization. Here we focused exclusively on audio. We'll move on to images.